Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Good to oh. hear. <laughs> yeah. Set up and ready to. Okay. Go. And I wanted to come online and say hi. Um, I love you. Miss you. <laughs> miss you too. Oh, I miss you a lot. Yes. Well, we let's try to get together when y'all come back. Okay. Yes. yes good. <laughs> I was <would love> that. <laughs> okay. We have one minute. Okay. And I have everything set up for you. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Minister Potts. You better wear glasses on. <laughs> looking good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So we're live on Facebook and, and we have one minute. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. We give God praise this morning. Amen for our service today. And certainly we thank God for you all that are on Facebook, on the conference line, as well as Zoom. God is so good. And all the time, he is worthy to be praised. Oh, yes. A bleeding him how just said, I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is peace in the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exhort his name together. We give God praise and we worship him today in the beauty of holiness. Suddenly we thank God again for everyone, amen, that has been participating uh, in our service throughout the last past two years. Suddenly we thank God for you. We appreciate you and we just say we couldn't do it without you. And we just want to take a moment to say thank you. We thank God for early this morning, our Sunday school lesson, amen, taught by uh, Minister Johnson, extraordinary lesson, fantastic job, amen, preparing us for the coming of the Lord, amen. That's all right, isn't it? Suddenly, we just thank God again for everyone that is here today. We want to take time out, amen, to... I uh, ask you to remember those uh, that are sick and have been sick and went through surgeries and rehab, rehabilitations that it came out. We just gonna ask your continuous prayer for those, amen. Because the Bible says, the prayers of the righteous man, it prevaileth much. Let us remember those that are in a nursing home, those that are in the uh, 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 the prison, uh, let us remember them and let us remember our nation. 
It is so much going on, so much crime going on, so much killing going on, but in the midst of it all, God is in control. Thank God for Jesus. Let us continue to keep those in prayer. Let us continue to pray one for another. Let us continue to lift New Saint Mark up and all of the disciples and God's people everywhere. If ever the time we need the Lord, certainly we need the Lord right now. We want to take time out to thank you all for your liberal giving. Certainly, I often say we, we couldn't do it without you all. And we just like to say thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your offering. We say thank you. But we like to let you know that there are three ways, amen, that you can continue to give. One is online for www.newstmark.org. The next way you can give is the Give the Five, amen. And you can just click on that app and it will give you uh, the directions to send your monies. Or you can just drop it in the U.S. Postal uh, at 3905 Springdale Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21207 attention trustee ministry let us continue to pray one for another at this time we're gonna have prayer from minister earl potts and then i'll come right back god bless you praise the lord everybody let us bow our heads and go before the lord Father, the name of Jesus, there's no other name that I know. Lord, if you withdraw yourself from us, Lord, where can we go? Father, we thank you for being a good God. And we know that above you, there is no other. Lord, we thank you for last night's sleep. And we thank you that you watched over us while we slumbered and we slept. And you touched us with your finger of love and you woke us up this morning. And Lord, we just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the blood that's running warm through our veins. And Father, we thank you, oh God, that you kept us through the storms and you kept us through the rain. And we all just say thank you. Lord, if it had not been for you who was on our side, where would we be right now? Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Yes. For you are God and you are God alone. Yes. Father, we thank you for being our savior. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for being our peace. Yes. We thank you for being our strength. Lord, we thank you for everything. Yes. And in everything, we give thanks. Lord, we pray for the sick, even right now. Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless them, keep them, surround them, yes. protect them, oh God. Lord, watch over those who are in nursing homes right now. Father, pray for the bereaved families even right now, Lord, for you know what they're going through. But through it all, you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. And Father, teach us to stand on your word and on your promises. Yes. Lord, you haven't brought us this far to leave us. And Father, we just thank you right now. Yes in the midst of everything that is going on all around us. Teach us to give you praise in the midst of it all. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, let your praise continually be in my mouth. Yes. Let me continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. Forgive us of all of our sins yes. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. 
But you said if we confess our sins, yeah. that you're able to forgive us. Yeah. And Father, we just thank you right now. Yeah. Continue to bless the new St. Mark Baptist Church. Yeah. Continue to bless Continue to watch over us. Yeah. Continue to surround us. Yeah. Continue to provide for us yeah. as you said that you would. Yeah. And Father, we know that you haven't brought us this far to leave us. Yeah. And Father, we thank you right now. We praise you right now. Yeah. We glorify you right now because you are God and God alone. Yeah. Teach us to look unto the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from you. Yeah. Lord, continue to bless us, and we shall be blessed. Continue to keep us, and we shall be kept. Yeah. Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. We give you praise, yeah. and we give you thanksgiving. Yeah. For it belongs to you yeah. and you alone. Father, continue to bless us and keep us, and we'll continue to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, and let all the people of God say, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Minister Potts, for that beautiful prayer. At this time, we get ready to have our scripture reading. Amen. This morning, coming from Psalms 24, verses 1 through 10. And it reads as follows, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwelleth therein, for he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the floods, who shall ascend into the hill? of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place, he that has clean hands. Let me say that again. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully he shall receive the blessings from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy faith O jacob selah Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? That was a question. The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Verse 10, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, Selah. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. And we know that his word is already blessed. We like to take this time out this morning 
Uh, we have a guest, uh, pastor, amen, and preacher, amen, on this morning. And certainly uh, for the, the, the Sundays, uh, for the last couple months, amen, we've been having some fantastic preaching, and we are certainly grateful to God. Well, our preacher this morning and pastor is none other than Pastor Mark. A. Wainwright. Pastor Mark A. Wainwright is a native of Baltimore, Maryland. He is the youngest of three sons, and his, he is the late deaconess Ralph and Wainwright Sr., and his mother is Ernestine F. Wayne Wright. He established his Christian walk with the Lord at a tender age of nine years old. He was licensed to preach on November the 19th, 1989. And he was also ordained July the 15th, 2001 by the Concord Baptist Church in Baltimore under the leadership of Dr. Matthews L. Jones. And certainly we are just so grateful about that. He has received his education and he is also the pastor of Good Tidings Baptist Church in Baltimore. Pastor Wayne Wright is the proud husband of Erica Wayne Wright of Baltimore and the proud parent of three beautiful children, Eden, Blake, and Sophia. Let us pray for Pastor Wayne Wright. Let us focus this morning on the word of God. And after we focus, let us open up our hearts and hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. After this selection, we'd like to introduce to some and present to others none other than Pastor Wayne Wright. God bless you. Hear ye the man of God. We are standing. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful place to be. On holy ground, just look down at your feet. And I know that there are angels, if we can see in the spirit, they're all around. Let Jesus is looking for followers who realize that they are sinners and need a savior. My hope is that we can motivate you to get serious about the Lord. Stop. 
now, God, we embrace your spirit. We receive your power. We really acknowledge the fact that you have fearfully and wonderfully made us. You've given us our hands to lift and worship to you. You've given us our hearts so that they may beat after you and long for you. But you fashioned us, God, to worship you. Today we let you know we live to worship you. We long to worship you. We worship you, God. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. If that's in your heart, sing that to the Lord. Hey, hey. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Worship is anything we offer unto God. It's what we go about doing in our everyday life. To worship you, to worship you, I live. As I drive down the street, as I walk through sweet smelling savor in your nostrils. We pray that you receive our praise as a testimony of how good you've been to us. We pray you receive our praise as a, a, a notion of how much we love you and we care for you and we are grateful to you for all that you've done. Take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth and preach with life giving and liberating the power of your word. Allow it to go forth on good ground and to bring forth much fruit. Save someone today, Lord. Heal someone. Deliver someone. And encourage the body of Christ. We'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a quick favor. Turn with me to, uh, the, to Psalm 24, the Old Testament book. That's Hebrew song book. Turn with me to Psalm 24. The English Standard Version of the Bible renders this ancient text as follows. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully he will receive blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation my dear brothers and sisters i want to preach and teach for a few moments as the lord shall guide from the subject and tag this text, I'm all in. I'm all in. My brothers and sisters, as we think about all that is going on in this world in which we live, if we intend to serve our community the way God wants us to serve, we've got to be all in. We intend to make sure that the church uh, not just regains its place of power in the community as an anchor institution. We have got to be all in. We've got to be all in for the goodness and mercy of our God. We've got to be all in to make sure that God has first place in our lives and not second, third, or any other place. We've got to be all in 
to ensure that the God that we serve knows exactly, uh, he already knows because he's omniscient, he all has all knowledge, he has all power, but we ought to let God know by our actions the place that God has in our lives. Where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. Where our heart is, there will our treasure be. So if we truly intend to be a ministry that blesses our communities, we've got to give and give in such a way that our resources will become seed that is dropped into good ground and bring forth much fruit. If we intend to be a blessing in this community, it is our responsibility as the church of almighty God to sow seed into our community. If we intend to do all that God is calling and gifting and gracing us to do, we've got to be all in. We got to yeah. be all in. We got to yeah. be all in. Uh, that means no half stepping. We got to be all in. No uh, time to give up on what we know is going on in this world. We got to be like the rapper Lil Baby. His mama's told him, now whatever you do, don't half step. And he was always running around trying to hang with the gangster crowd, trying to put his records together, trying to go and deal uh, drugs with those who were out there in the street to make sure that those who were addicted could continue to line his pockets. But somewhere along the way, he was uh, moved by God. He was inspired to stop selling a product that was destructive and to begin to rap and to make music. And all I'm really trying to say is that God has given us and graced us with some gifts to be able to move and to minister in the community in which we live and God does not want us to use what he gave us for evil but he wants us to use what he gave us for good that's a stop right here let's pause there parenthetically in other words whatever gift God has given you if God has gifted you as a mathematician you ought not be running numbers but you ought to be helping someone else to be able to learn how to budget what they have and to project the goodness of what they have and be able to project it and help them to move forward in this world. If we've been gifted as someone who go, has gone to school as a pharmacist and we know how to prescribe medications, we ought not use that for bad or for evil to write illegal uh, prescriptions so that somebody can become more addicted by, whereby we can line our pockets or prescription medications end up all over our community, but we are to use our gift for good to help those who are in need. It's our responsibility to take whatever God has given us and use it for good and not for bad. We've got to be all in. We've got to be all in to make the church all that it can be. We've got to be all in to make our educational system all that it can be. We've got to be all in to make our relationship with Christ count. We've got to be all in. Got to be all in. Ain't no half-stepping. No half-stepping. Time for half-stepping is gone. The time for playing church is gone. The time for playing like we've got a relationship with God, but we deny the power thereof is gone. The time for doing things haphazardly is gone. Texas Taylor to teach us as we open it up. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's. Everything that we stand on is God's. Everything that we inhale and exhale belongs to God. Everything that we think we have worked hard to earn and to pay for belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there yeah. are world and those who dwell therein. That word uh, in Hebrew for fullness literally means it's not that which fills uh, something up in other as it is in other contexts but rather it is the state of being full 
or abundance. God wants us to be in a state of abundance. God wants us to be in a state of being full. God wants us to live life and to have life and to have it more abundantly. God wants us to react in such a way that we are living in the overflow of his blessings, the overflow of his grace, the overflow of his mercy, the overflow of everything that God has placed in our path. So it's not fullness in the sense that I'm going to take a cup or take a pitcher and pour it into a cup and what is in the cup will fill or what's in the pitcher will fill the cup up. But literally, it is the state of being full or the state of abundance. In other words, it's the state that we know that we've got all that we can handle. It's the state that we know that we've got more than we make than we think we've got the capacity to handle or to use because God wants us to understand that we are in the fullness yes. of him and the abundance of him. That word founded uh, helps us to really look into it because it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness or the abundance thereof. The earth is the Lord's and everything that continues to grow and to multiply and go and continue to grow and multiply and exponentially grow. It is the fullness of God. It belongs to him. It belongs not to us, but it belongs to the creator of the world. It belongs to the creator of the earth. It belongs, watch this, it belongs to the one who stood on nothing and called everything into existence out of nothing. It belongs to the one who stood and called the dry ground to separate from the yeah. wet ground and the Earth and the, uh, the seas and the rivers were then able to make a difference as the ground began to protrude up. It's the one who called the hills and mountains into existence. It's the one who called the birds of the air to fly and the fish of the sea to swim and the beasts of the field to crawl and to go all over the earth. It all belongs to him. Yes. So when we understand, when we really internalize the fact that it's not ours to begin with, That's we right. begin to manage things differently. When yeah. we understand that whatever we have doesn't belong to us, it belongs to him. We can yeah. manage it in such a way that we are willing to give and yeah. to share with others. We don't share begrudgingly. We don't share out of necessity. We don't share because we want to tax right off. We don't share because we want to go and give and then feel good about ourselves. No, we give because God lets us know we are lovingly responding to the fullness that he has given us. And the more we give, the more God blesses us. Yes. Mm. It helps us to understand yeah. not only the earth, the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but the world and those who dwell therein. So all of us belong to him. We don't belong to each other. That's you don't right. belong to your spouse. Your spouse don't belong to you. Your children don't belong to you. You don't belong to your children or you don't belong to your parents. But we belong to him. Yes. For he has founded it upon the seas and established yeah. it upon the rivers. That word found in Hebrew, it's a Hebrew word, yasad, which literally means to establish, to found, to fix, or to appoint, to firmly place, uh, to build on a foundation that has been laid and hewn out or carved out in such a way that you can build on it and whatever you build on it will last and uh, endure the test of time. So God wants us to understand that he is the one who has founded the earth upon the seas. He's the one who established it. He's the one who fixed it. He's the one who firmly laid the earth out of the sea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at what God does right there. He takes the liquid that he created and lays the earth 
on top of the liquid and the God. earth does not get destroyed. If God can do that, God can bless your finances. If God can do that, God can turn your health situation around. If God can do that, God can turn our communities around. If God can do that, God can turn our cities around. If God can do that, God can turn this corrupt political system around. If God can do that, God can turn this coronavirus around. If God can do that, God can turn all of this around. Because he lays the earth firmly on the sea on the seas and he established it upon the river i don't know about you but i'm so glad that god can put that which is on solid which is solid that which is solid yes and lay it on that which is liquid mm -hmm. and the solid does not get destroyed that's it. That's a bit of an oxymoron because so often we put so stuff that's solid in liquid and it begins to deteriorate. But God mm -hmm. is so wit so wise and so infinite in his power that he takes the earth and firmly lays it on the sea. So here's the question. Somebody's asking the question, well, well, Pastor, how can I be all in? How can I be all in? It sounds good what you're talking about, but I need some practical help to help me be all in. I'm glad you asked. Number one, we've got to make conscious choices. Look at the A section of verse four. Let's start with verse three. But the A section of verse four, uh, verse three says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? In other words, how can I be all in? Verse four, the A section says, he who has clean hands mm -hmm. and a pure heart. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, that, that word he is not gender specific. So it literally translates to be those, male or female, those who have yes. clean hands and a pure heart. Yes. Yes. Those who make the conscious decision in this coronavirus pandemic, to wash your hands with soap and water as often as possible. Yeah. Make a conscious decision to wear a mask to protect yourself and those we encounter. We gotta yeah. make a conscious choice. What choices do we make when it really matters? Mm. Now I'm not talking about the choices we make behind closed doors when it really does not matter and we've gotten together with some little group where we decided that we're going to make some decisions that's going to affect the whole body and it's not only one or two that's going to make the decision. No, no, I'm talking about what choices do we make when it really matters? What choices do we make when the whole ministry is on the line? What choices do we make when it's a matter of life and death? What choices do we make when we see evil all around us? Do we turn our nose and go in the opposite direction or do we speak up for righteousness sake? What choices do we make when somebody is gossiping about somebody else? Do we step up and make a decision, a conscious choice to say, no, you're not going to talk bad about those that who to whom you're supposed to be connected. Matter of fact, if you want to talk, go in and talk with them instead of talking about them. No, you're not going to make a conscious decision or a conscious choice to do evil and be all in. Let me say that one more time. We cannot make conscious decisions or conscious choices to do evil and be all in. We make a conscious choice to do evil we are consciously choosing, I'm going to be on the side of wrong, deceit, and illicit behavior. Are we willing to make the right choice when everything around us is cutthroat and immoral just to get ahead? Are we willing to make conscious choices 
to do the right thing even when no one else is around or That's wants right. to do the right thing? That's right. Are we willing to make conscious choices for good rather than evil? I'll stop by this morning to help us encourage ourselves and to understand that we've got to make conscious choices. We got to make a conscious choice. In other words, uh, we are all sitting, watching, watching the broadcast. You're making a conscious choice to watch it and to see how it can be a blessing to you. You're making a conscious choice to sow your resources into good ground, praying that it will, be, it will yield much fruit. You're making conscious choices to help us to grow rather than conscious choices to keep us where we are and dismantle what God is doing. Make the conscious choice. Wash your hands. The Bible says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. That's a choice. Clean hands. In ancient uh, society and antiquity, the psalmist reminds us that in that agricultural society, they had to deal with animals that were domesticated and undomesticated. They were out in the fields pulling vegetables as well. So before they went anywhere, they washed their hands. Let me put it this way. Uh, anytime you go to a restaurant, went to a restaurant uh, just a few days ago, and when I went to the restaurant, I had to go to the restroom. So as I was going to the restroom, I was washing my hands, and then a sign popped up in front of me on the wall between the mirrors. It says, employees or team members must wash hands before going back to work. That's a beautiful sign because it says, if you're going to be on the team, you got to wash your hands before you get back and engage in all types of work activities. And I've stopped by this morning to help us understand that God wants us on God's team, but we got to wash our hands. We got to have clean hands and a pure heart. We've got to wash our hands and we've got to be washed thoroughly from the mind onto the heart and down through our bodies. We've got to be washed. Won't he make you clean? So glad that John P. Key put it that way. Won't he make you clean inside? God will make you clean inside. God will make you clean inside. E or she who has clean hands and a pure heart, you've made it a conscious choice. But secondly, how can we be all in? We've got to make a critical commitment. The B section of verse 4 of the text says, who does not lift up his soul to what is false? and does not swear deceitfully. I don't know about you. It's one thing to make the conscious choice to have clean hands and pure heart, but then we've got to make the critical commitment, which is our growth day in and day out to ensure that we do not lift up our soul to something that is false or swear deceitfully. In other words, what that literally means is this. We will not lift up the innermost part of our being that will return to God when we die. We will not lift that up to that which is false. We're not going to lift up our soul to that which is fake, but we're going to lift up our soul to that which is real. We're not going to lift up our soul to that which uh, is evil, but we're going to lift up our soul to the goodness of God in the land of the living, knowing that the God that we serve has all power. We will not swear deceitfully. In other words, we're not going to uh, defraud anyone to the amount of anything. We're not going to defraud any 
being uh, so that they will not be able to go and grow and become all that God is calling them to become. We will not swear deceitfully. Yes. Stop by to help us jump in and be all in. We will not swear deceitfully. So the question is, what are you committed to? Are you committed to the gospel? Are you committed to the spreading thereof? Or are you committed to your own agenda? Are you committed to the uplifting of the entire institution and the entire community? Or are you simply here for the uplifting of your own self? I'll stop by this day to encourage us. If you are here for self and self alone, you're in the wrong place. If you're here only because you want to make sure that you get all the advantages that you want, uh, you're in the wrong place. But God says it's all right to be in the wrong place because the spirit of the Lord has the power to transform us from the inside out. He can transform us from the inside out. Out. And even if we've come in with the wrong motivation, he can transform our wrong motivation into some good motivation. And I'm so glad that the God that we serve helps us to be all in. I don't know about you, but I'm all in, y'all, because I want to receive, as uh, the closing verses say, I want to receive a blessing from the Lord. I'm all in because I want to receive the righteousness of God. I'm all in because I want to be in the state of doing what is required according to the standard of Almighty God. I want to be all in. In. I want to be all in because I know that the God that we serve is helping us to go and become all in. I want to be all in because I want to be dressed in his righteousness alone. I want to be all in because of the salvation that he gives. I want to be all in because the God that we serve helps us to be able to move forward and not backwards. Helps us to go and grow and not be stagnant helps us to go forward instead of just standing still. I want to be all in. Is there anybody in the house today? Is there anybody watching today who wants to be all in? If you want to be all in, lift up your hands unto our God and say, God, I want to be all in. Lift up your voice unto God and say, God, I want to be all in. As Miranda Chase put it this way, whatever it takes, I'm all in. Whatever it takes, I'm all in. Whatever you have to do to me, God, I'm all in. Whatever I've got to give, I'm all in. Whatever I've got to give up, I'm all in. Whatever it takes. Yes, sir. I'm all in. In. Eternal and everlasting God, our Father, we come in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus to say thank you. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Thank you, God, for granting unto us a community of people who want to be all in. God, we're not going to focus on those who don't want to be all in. We're going to turn them over to you. Yes, but we will sir. focus on those who want to be all in. Yes. God, I want to be all in in my giving. I want to be all in in yes. my discipleship. I want to be all in in my walk yes. with you. I want to be all in Fix my attitude. I want to be all in. Fix my mindset. I want to be all in. Help me to grow. I want to be all in. God, we thank you for yes. helping us. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise all over. Amen. Certainly we thank the Lord 
amen for the word of God coming from Pastor Wayne Wright. What a word, what a word, what a word. Praise amen. the Lord. He had said something about his subject was, I'm all in. And so we like to know on Facebook, conference line and Zoom, are you all in? Amen. But at this time, we are gonna give the invitation. Amen. Amen. And we just God, amen. For his word. Amen. Yes. We're gonna send the invitation to those that are in need of Jesus. Amen. Whether you're on the conference line, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Zoom, you can say, Lord, you know, I'm all in. I'm trying to be all in. I'm trying to do the best that I can do. So we're going to give you this invitation that you can come, amen, to Christ amen. on this morning. You can say, Lord, amen. I know that I'm a sinner. Amen. I believe that you died mm. on the cross yes. for me and that you have rose for me. And I'm asking you, Lord, that you forgive me for all of my sins. Yes. Come into my heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. Is there one? Amen. While the blood is running warm in your vein, God has given us an opportunity. Amen. To come. His arms is not too short that he cannot say. Yes. yes. Neither is it. His heavy that he cannot hear amen Hallelujah. no matter what your situation is no matter what your circumstances is jesus had died and went to the cross for you and i that we all have a right to the tree of life it's there one amen all you have to do is open up your heart open up your mind amen and become godly sorry repent of your sins and turn from it and i tell you he said i will no wise cast thee out is there one if there's one this morning you can log in to the chat box amen we have amen. we have ministers that amen. is available unto you this morning is there one amen certainly we thank god amen for his word <laughs> pastor wayne wright amen let us examine ourselves yes, let amen. us not only his word this morning but let yes, us take Lord. his word amen he was saying we don't want to be givers of evildoers amen amen but we want men and women boys and girls be able to look at us and mm. look at the life that we are living and mm -hmm. say what must what i must? do to be saved god yes, bless Lord. you pastor right mm. may heaven smile upon you is our prayer certainly we thank god amen for our service on today and for those who have participated by way of Facebook conference line, amen. God bless you all. We love you today. May heaven smile upon you. Keep on keeping on. Our amen. benediction. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Be safe on this holiday. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. May, may God give you traveling mercies as you, our lovely couple, travel. Amen. Yeah. I didn't want to say that. Right there, you already feel it. Let's go. It's still a happy day. Somebody holler if you hear me. Can I sing it? Oh, happy day. All right, y'all. Stay with us.
That was a treat. <laughs> yeah, that was a treat. God bless you, New St. Mark. Saint God bless you. God bless you. To our wonderful couple. Yes. And uh, uh, God bless you. Sister Pan Emerson, we are so happy that you continue to get stronger you're with your health. Amen. Amen. And we know your spirit is strong. We thank God for you. God bless yes. you, Sister. Yes, God bless you. Yes, and um, brother Herbert Williams is on. We thank God for him. And with our Sunday school yes. as well as our last our um worship service. Cleve brother Cleveland Apps. Yes. Sister Dr. Yes. Graham. These are just some names that are still on the phone <laughs> waiting. Yes. Yeah, we have brother Robert Good morning, Graham. How you doing? Yo, Graham. Good, good, good morning. Good. Who's who's that? I'm sorry. And we heard Mark. Okay. Who who's on the um, um Zoom? Sister Sister Laverne is on Zoom, and I see another person. You want to say hi? Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Are we missing? Good morning. That? I had to take myself off mute. Of okay. Good morning, Sister Laverne. Good morning. God bless you. We have God bless you also. Good. Our Zoom participants. Amen. Amen. Well, good. well, we pray that you all have a great afternoon, and we'll see you next. Oops. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week, where we will have uh, Reverend Dominique Smith will be with us on next week. Amen. Oh, nice. Amen. God bless you.
Mm -hmm. And we heard Mark. Yes, Mark was. So Mark a long time. Yes. After we reverend. Yes, for a long time. He was Been a blessing. raised in the Congress or the convention. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good afternoon. Enjoy your day. God yeah. bless you. Happy Labor Day. Thank God you. God bless everyone. <laughs>